everyone around the world. Hi, I am in the middle of a pretty crazy time in my life. I'm definitely gonna make a video about it because if you care, then maybe it'll be interesting. But if you don't, it's okay. I had like 20 minutes this morning to sit down and chat with you. So I wanna talk about five reasons why you should not go into tech. For a little bit of reference, hi, I'm Greta. I'm a UX designer, a Latina in tech. I've been a UX designer full, full, full time for almost two years now. I just got promoted, yes! I work at the Home Depot, so I'm e-commerce, in the e-commerce space, customer facing. I feel like everyone these days is talking about how amazing tech is, hyping it up like crazy, saying like, <laughs> Tech is amazing because otherwise I would not be working in tech if I didn't absolutely love it. But there are a couple things that you should keep in mind before you try to break into tech. The first reason why not to go into tech is because you don't know what else to do. I feel like this is a very general one and it really applies to a lot of different professions, but especially in tech, because tech is notoriously difficult to break into. So if it's not something that you're absolutely in love with, obsessed with, if you don't love it so much to the point that you are willing to put in the work and the time to go through the grueling process of trying to break into tech, then it can be really difficult to keep up that motivation. Especially when it comes to the UX design or product design interviews, those interviews are notoriously difficult a lot of the time. My interview for my current role was about five hours long. Girl, a lot of questions from product managers, UX managers, UX designers, everyone that you could think of interviewed me for my current role and it was pretty crazy, but here we are because I love tech. If it's something that you really are just doing it for the money or doing it for the perks, then it's not worth it. In terms of the interview process, not only are they notoriously difficult, but they're notoriously long. I could go on a whole rant as to why it is just so discriminatory that especially tech interviews are like two months long sometimes, the whole process of interviewing and landing the role and starting your first day. And that's completely unfair because not everyone has the time and the ability and the resources to be able to just like stop working or to put their work on hold for that long and wait for an offer. So that's a whole other conversation for another day. Design interviews and tech interviews tend to be very, very, very long, a very long process. This kind of goes back to my first point. If tech isn't something that you're really passionate about and interested in, it's really difficult to kind of go through all of the time, all of the energy, all of the effort to go through and land your, especially your first job. It gets a little bit easier once you break into the role and you break into tech. So just keep that in mind when you're starting the tech interview process. I will say this obviously depends on companies. Some companies are a little bit more open-minded and they're not as crazy and they won't make you go through like two months long until you get your first role, but a lot of the tech companies that I have seen nowadays for these roles do take quite a long time when it comes to getting that first call to getting the actual role. Number three, I feel like it's really easy for you to become stagnant in your tech role. You do have so much freedom. You do have a lot of flexibility when it comes to your schedule, and it's really easy to fall into the trap of just fulfilling your day-to-day -day duties and not really putting in the work to get promoted or to get that raise, etc. I have met a couple of UX designers that have been in the field for like five years and they're still considered just a UX designer. They're not mid-level UX designers, they're not treated as senior UX designers, their title is still UX designer. Especially when it comes to product design or UX design, it's really easy to just listen to what your product manager asks you to do. They're like, oh hey, we want to build this new experience, can you do XYZ? And you're like, yeah, sure, I got it. Go and goes into Figma and does it in like 10 minutes and you're like, here you go. And that's literally all you do day to day is just fulfilling the duties that people tell you to do. 
but I feel like in order for you to really level up, especially when it comes to UX design and other tech roles, you really have to put in outside work, as in work outside of your day-to-day -day role. So for example, for me to get promoted so quickly from UX designer to UX designer two, and by the way, I can make a whole video about how I got promoted in like less than two years. In order for me to get promoted from UX designer level one to UX designer level two, I really had to do a lot of outside work. So I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos, how to level up in Figma, how to do auto layout, interactive components, all these things that weren't necessarily required of me at my day-to-day -day job, but just showing that I had those skills in my day-to-day -day job really made them feel like, oh wow, okay, she's really skilled, she knows what she's talking about, she loves what she does, and so she's kind of like an easy person to promote. And in that case, when it's really easy for you to fall into your day-to-day -day work and just like fulfill the duties that you're told to do and nothing else, it's really easy for you to kind of get bored in your role and get and kind of lose that motivation and lose that passion for what you're doing. So in order for you to like continue spicing things up and get promoted and you know, level up in your career, it's really important for you to put in that work outside of your daily role. It can be really difficult and sometimes overwhelming to work with such a large number of people with such diverse expertise. Now on the flip side, this is really exciting, right? This is super exciting because you get to learn from so many different people. Of course, we started to drill every time, every single time. Now on the flip side, this can be really exciting because when you're working with so many different people of different expertise, you get to learn so much more than if you're kind of working in a silo job. It's such a collaborative space. And as someone that is introverted for the most part, I still love this aspect because otherwise it gets so lonely and I feel like you just definitely, you don't grow as much when you're working in such a siloed position. So to give you a little bit of context, again, we all know I'm a UX designer and because I'm a UX designer I work with a product manager they're kind of more of the business side I work with engineering they're the more technical side and then I also work with my UX manager I also work with UX researchers these are people who help me validate my designs and test my designs with real users and make sure like okay is our solution that we came up with with of this customer problem is it actually solving people's needs and providing them with what they need. It's definitely sometimes difficult to balance all of these different stakeholders. Stakeholders are just people that have a say or kind of have a stake in what you're creating. Sometimes your product manager will tell you one thing, they'll say, no, this is what the business wants. And sometimes engineering will tell you another thing and say, hey, this is literally not possible to build from the back end or from the front end. When you have these differing opinions from people that are coming from different perspectives, it's kind of up to you to find that balance and that can be really overwhelming at first, but I definitely will say that as time goes on, as you get more experience, you definitely get more comfortable with this. Do not become a UX or product designer if you think you're gonna be essentially a graphic designer. This is very specific to UX design. I wanted to throw this one in here. That is not to say that graphic designers are bad people and they don't do anything. Graphic designers are extremely important when it comes to telling a story, especially for a brand. But UX design, I will say, definitely has a little bit more of an analytical aspect to it. It's a little bit more logical and that's what I love about UX is that it is definitely a balance between being very creative and also being very technical. So not only are you designing solutions, that's the more creative part, but you're also having to validate your solutions with real users. You have to use user research to back up the reason why you're designing something the way that you are. And for some people, they might not expect that. They might've thought, oh my God, I thought this was a purely creative role. When it's not, honey? There has to be some kind of aspect of just being data driven with your design solutions because then there's really no reason for you to be designing what you're designing. And that's it. Everything good that people say about tech is definitely true but I just wanted to bring to light some things that you should definitely keep in mind before you spend a lot of money, spend a lot of time, energy, trying to break into tech. If you wanna chat a little bit more or see more of my face, then you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I'm there a lot of the time, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, adios.